I'll read the entire Megamind script if I have to. It's a good, good show on there. So we're recording. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I wish you would have told me that. Nope. Because uh, I nope. wish... Okay. Nope. Th- this I is what happens. I wish I hadn't said that. And, uh, oh, boy. All right. <clears throat> so do you want to start? So. All right. This is the Swag uh, Peasant productions incorporated podcast um that's quickly becoming regular and i hope it stays that way just because these are fun for me maybe not for you but it doesn't matter i'm having a fun time (coughs) that's great so um today our topic is uh independent agencies of the um united states government Yay! I, I can tell you're excited about that. I'm very excited. I've never been more excited in my entire life. Do you enjoy your government? No. Nope. Do you love your country? It's alright. Would you rather be a Canadian? I'd rather be in the homeland, in my homeland of Japan. So you're not human. Alrighty, let's get this show on the road, shall we? <laughs> so, first we should probably define what an uh, independent agency is. And uh, independent agencies of the United States federal government are agencies that exist outside the federal executive departments, uh, those headed by a cabinet secretary, and the uh, executive office of the president. Uh, these agency mm-hmm. rules or uh, regulations... Uh, when in force, have the uh, power of a federal law. So basically, you wow, is but you isn't. Oh, that's pretty nifty, Griffin. Why don't you tell me about your agency that you had picked out? My service was the uh, Selective Service System. Um, and what they do is... um, th- or Their mission statement, actually... Um, is uh, to register men and maintain a system that, when authorized by the President and Congress, rapidly provides uh, personnel in a fair and equitable manner while managing an alternative service program for uh, conscientious objectors. Uh, That word is conscientious, not conscientious. Um, I can't talk. Great reading, Griffin. Thank you. Please continue. So, um, the Selective Service would provide personnel to the uh, military by conducting a draft using a list of young men's names gathered through the Selective Service registration process. Virtually all men between ages 18 through 25 must register. Only if a high compliance within this law will a, fir- will a future draft be fair and equitable. The obligation of a man to register is imposed by the Military Selective Service Act, which establishes and uh, governs the uh, operations of the Selective Service System. The Alternative Service Program uh, would provide uh, public service work assignments in America's communities in lieu of uh, military service from men classified as uh, conscientious objectors to all military service. So basically that just means uh, the Selective Service System is an independent agency of the United States government that maintains information about those potentially subject to uh, military conscription. Mm. So that's pretty interesting. That, that's a lot. A lot I'm of, intrigued. A lot of big boys, you know? Oh. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Um, so, what they're doing at the moment, um, is kind of weird, because it honestly depends on if there's either, quote-unquote, peacetime, or basically a national emergency. Uh, in peacetime, the Triple S conducts registration, compliance, and verification functions for young men aged, uh, 18 to 25 years of age. Triple uh, S manages the third largest uh, P2, I think that is, uh, database in the federal government. Uh, we provide information sharing services to the Department of Defense to help sustain recruitment for the all-volunteer force, 
while facilitating computer matching services between registrants, uh, their registration for a selective service, and access to federal and state benefits. I just spit all over my monitor. The, um, Sounds like a handful. The, uh, the President and Congress would authorize the mobilization of the Triple S during a national emergency. Uh, reserve Forces uh, officers would establish a Triple S state headquarters at about uh, 450 area offices at uh, predetermined locations. A lottery will establish the order in which men would be called and induction orders would be issued in lottery number order. Uh, agency mobilization plans are designed to meet the needs of the Department of the Defense. The, yeah, Department of the Defense. Uh, Department of Defense. Yeah. The hmm. first priority group would consist of men in the calendar year of their 20th birthday. Uh, registrants receiving induction orders would either report to the military entrance processing uh, station for examination and possible immediate induction or uh, file claims for uh, postponement, deferment, or exemption from military service. Uh, Triple S would activate local and appeal boards for administrative and uh, judgmental claims. Such claims would be considered by the uh, area office or the local board, depending on the nature of the claim. Um, this is run by Donald M. Don Benton, who, from what I remember, kind of looks like the one beaver slash woodchuck from um, those lottery commercials. The uh, guy who says, keep on scratching? Yeah, believe? that guy. That guy. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's what I think he, he looks that. like, but he's, he's the head. He goes by Don. He doesn't like being called Donald M. Not even Donnie. Hmm. Oh, Donnie nope. boy. He doesn't prefer that. He just wants Don. He doesn't. Don Benton, Don. straight to the point. He sounds like an old-fashioned uh, crooner. Sounds like he worked with uh, Tony Bennett or uh, Hurricane Smith. All right. Um, um, if you want to find out more about them, the web address for their site is... Uh, www.triplesgov uh, uh, it's literally three lowercase s's uh, don't overthink it you can also uh, contact them on twitter um, at uh, triple s underscore gov you can email them at, oh my god you can email them at uh, dmc support at triple s dot gov or uh, uh, dmc espanol um, at triple s dot gov if you're Spanish, um, or just if you want to figure out general information about whatever about this program or whatever this uh, agency, you would email to um, information at triple s dot gov. They also have uh, two phone numbers. Um, their toll free number is eight 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 six five five one eight two five. And their non-toll-free number is, um, I guess their main one would be, a uh, 847-688-6888. And mm. if that's not enough for you kitties out there, um, they also can receive mail, a selective service system, uh, the Data Management Center, which is not the National Center, because the, uh, the selective service system is in a bunch of different places. It has three main parts, um, and one of them is the Data Management Center. Uh, P.O. Box 94638 Palantine, 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 I like Palantine, um, Illinois, 60094-4638. Uh, hmm. All right. So you're up. What, what you doing? Homeboy. Well, I have the Farm Credit Administration. Now, what exactly does the FCA do? Well, the FCA's mission is to ensure that farm credit system institutions and farmer MAC are safe, sound, and dependable sources of credit and related services for all credit worthy and eligible persons in agriculture and rural America. 
Our agency was created by a 1933 executive order of President Franklin D. Roosevelt. Today, the agency derives its authority from the Farm Credit Act of 1971 as amended. So, if you're a farmer, you're getting credit for it. You're, you're a farmer. Yeah. That's, that's it. <clears throat> now, how exactly does this agency help uh, the United States of America's? Well, I'll tell you, the, the concept of a reliable source of credit for the nation's farmers dates back to 1732 when the first cooperative credit system was organized in New London, Connecticut. Government intervention to meet this need, however, particularly, particularly for long-term credit to purchase land, only started in the early 19th century. It was then that most of the free land available in the West under the Homestead Act of 1862 was claimed, and farmers needed long-term credit to purchase land. However, comma, whereas credit from commercial banks was ready, readily available for business and industry, it was scarce in the short term and at high interest rates for agriculture. With land values rising, the need for long-term fixed-rate credit became acute. Mm. That sounds pretty so, spiffy. Yeah, getting credit for being a farmer. That's and it's steady, it's it's you know, it's more trustable yeah. than what was happening prior. So they've got some current projects going on, they have investment uh, eligibility, uh, where they would consider whether to include certain obligations unconditionally guaranteed by the United States Department of Agriculture as eligible investments for associations as well as cooperative principles, where this review would consider uh, cooperative principles and practices at system institutions, including, but not limited to, uh, whether, rev rev whether revisions to parts 611, uh, 611 and 615 are needed regarding association stock uh, issuance policies and impact of those policies on district bank uh, governance. That's that's. So they got they got things going on. That, that much like Frida, I know something's going on with them. All right, so the CEO is Glenn R. Smith, Glenner Smith, as I like to call him, and you can reach their website at www.fca.gov, and uh, where you'll be able to contact them through telephone at seven zero three eight eight three four zero five six. Uh, they also have email at info-line at fca.gov. And their mailing address is uh, Farm <coughs> Credit Administration, 1501 Farm Credit Drive, McLean, uh, Virginia, 22102-5090. Hmm. And then, of course, I just said their address in the mailing address. But you know, it's the same thing. It's, there's no difference in the mailing address and address. So. Oh, that's that's messed up. It's pretty interesting. It's it's pretty cool, you know. Farmers getting the credit they need. You know, they needed long term credit so they could buy land, but they couldn't. So this is a stable, secure way for farmers to be able to buy land. You know, because they need to grow crops. They need crops their land to grow the crops and keep the people alive. I think I might actually end it here. All right. Okay. Good night, everybody. Goodbye, children. Tuck yourselves in. Be safe. Drive safe.